Good morning, good morning, everyone. Wanna give God thanks for this another morning. And uh, we are able to come on the CJC prayer platform once more to worship, to lift up the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to pray on the behalf of our children and adolescents. This morning's program is focused on children and adolescents. And so this morning, as we come together, let us join hands and hearts so that we all can pray, we all can present our children and adolescents before our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. So as we go forward, let us seek the Lord's intervention. Let us seek the Lord's blessing so that we will able to avail ourselves to be used by God. Welcome each and every one. Wherever you are joining us from, we want to welcome you. We want to let you know that your presence is appreciative. We are happy to have you this morning joining with us. And we just want to work together as a team, as one body in Christ to, to lift up the name of Jesus and to do his will. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And before we go any further into the program, let us pray. Eternal God and our everlasting Father, Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for this morning. We give you thanks for life, for health and strength. We give you thanks for this prayer platform, Lord, for this group of people. We thank you for the leadership. We thank you for those, oh God, who have dedicated themselves morning after morning to come and to make this possible by the leading of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the Chapleton circuit this morning as we take on the task, mighty God. We look to you for your leading and for your direction. We pray, mighty God, that you will anoint us afresh and that your precious blood and help us, Jesus, that we will do all things to your name and, and glory. Lead and direct now as we leave all things into your hand. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, this, at this time, we will have our song of praise by Brother Ro. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation. Wonderful name. 
Amen, amen, amen. Indeed, the name of Jesus is the most powerful name. And this morning, that's why we are here to lift him up. We are here to magnify him. We are here to adore him. And so at this time, Elder Burgess will come to us with the prayer of adoration, thanksgiving, confession, and uplift, and in filling of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so he will be doing the scripture reading. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your love. We pray that you will, oh God, forgive us of our sins, Lord, and you will cleanse us, Lord, as we stood out to carry on with your will. We pray that, God, you will bless us with strength. And we ask for you to, to, to purify our heart and help us that we will be people who you can use, dear God. And we ask, Lord, that you will be lifted up by us, Lord, we who are sinful, we who are unworthy, we who are unrighteous, God, you will make us to be your people, Lord, make us to be vessels that we'll able to lift up your name and to honor you, Lord. And this morning we lift you up and we adore you, Lord. We give you our best of our service, dear God. We look to you, God, for cleansing. We look to you for our sins to be forgiven. We pray that, Lord, you will continue to use your people to do your work. And I know, Lord, that you will dwell in our vessels as long as we are able to, to present ourselves before you holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable service. God, tonight, this morning, we pray that you will bless this platform, Lord, with strength and with courage to continue to do what we are doing, dear God. I pray that, Lord, whatever we do, we will do it from the bottom of our heart, dear Father. We will come to you, Lord, as sheep as lambs dear god that you will able to lead us where oh god you may lead us this morning so lord i pray that you will be blessed your name will be lifted up today and lord your name will be adored and i pray that you will forgive us of our sins as we continue to carry out your duties we pray in jesus name amen, amen. our scripture reading will be taken from Samuel 16, first Samuel. Samuel 16, from 11 to 13. And it reads us, and Samuel said to Jesse, are all the young men here? Then he said, there remain yet the youngest. There he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, and the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. The Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Roma. To Rama. We give thanks and we bless the Lord for his word. Here is a portion of the word of the Lord we say. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, we are praying on the behalf of our youths and adolescents this morning. And so as we come together this morning, let us avail ourselves to be used by God because our children need deliverance. Our children need help. And this morning, that's what we are here for. We are here to call upon the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, in, on the behalf of our children and adolescents. At this time, we will go into our SOP segment.
Section 7, Lessons in Practical Virtues, Chapter 20, Helpfulness. Teach the children to be helpful. In the home school, the children should be taught how to perform the practical duties of everyday life. While they are still young, the mother should give them some simple task to do each day. It will take longer for her to teach them how than it would to do it herself, but let her remember that she is to lay for their character building the foundation of helpfulness. Let her remember that the home is a school in which she is the head teacher. It is hers to teach her children how to perform the duties of the household quickly and skillfully. As early in life as possible, they should be trained to share the burdens of the home. From childhood, boys and girls should be taught to bear heavier and still heavier burdens, intelligently helping in the work of the family firm. Overlook childish mistakes. Thousands are in their own homes are left almost uneducated. It is so much trouble, says the mother. I would rather do these things myself. It is such a trouble. You bother me. Does not mother remember that she herself had to learn in jots and tittles before she could be helpful? It is a wrong to children to refuse to teach them little by little. Keep these children with you. Let them ask questions and in patience answer them. Give your little children something to do and let them have the happiness of supposing they help you. There must be no repulsing of your children when trying to do proper things. If they make mistakes, if accidents happen and things break, do not blame them. Their whole future life depends upon the education you give them in their childhood years. Teach them that all their faculties of body and mind were given to them to use and that all are the Lord's pledged to his service. To some of these children, the Lord gives an early intimation of his will. Parents and teachers begin early to teach the children to cultivate their God-given faculties. Let children share home burdens. Make the life of your children pleasant, and at the same time teach them to be obedient and helpful, bearing small burdens as you bear larger ones. Educate them to habits of industry, so that the enemy will not make a workshop of their minds. Give your children something to think of, something to do, that they may be fitted for usefulness in this life and in the future life. From their earliest years, they should be trained to carry their share of the home burdens. They should be taught that obligations are mutual. They should also be taught to work quickly and neatly. This education will be of the greatest value to them in after years. Each member of the family should understand just the part he is expected to act in union with the others. All, from the child six years old and upward, should understand that it is required of them to bear their share of life's burdens, a source of experience and pleasure. How important that fathers and mothers should give their children from their very babyhood the right instruction. They are to teach them to obey the command, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And the children, as they grow in years, are to appreciate the care that their parents have given them. They are to find their greatest pleasure in helping father and mother. A charm may surround the humblest employment. If children were taught to regard the humble round of everyday duties as the course marked out for them by the Lord, as a school in which they were to be trained to render faithful and efficient service, how much more pleasant and honorable would their work appear? To perform every duty as under the Lord throws a charm around the humblest employment and links the workers on earth with the holy beings who do God's will in heaven. And in our appointed place, we should discharge our duties with as much faithfulness as do the angels in their higher sphere. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will go into our prayer song as we prepare our intercessors to pray on the behalf of our children and adolescents.
Sister Colley, it's your time. Sister Simone Colley. I'm praying for, pray for the young people lost interest in church. Pray for the backsider youth among us that they will return to the field before too late. Let us pray. Most righteous, eternal God. Father, you are our creator. You are a problem solver. You are everything to us. And this morning, be humble. I humble come to you, O oh God, on behalf of your young people, your children, mighty God. You love them with an everlasting love and you die for them. And this morning, God, may ask in the name of Jesus, remember them one more time, God. May ask your Lord to open their understanding and help them to know that you are a God to serve, oh God, no matter how small they are. Father, you can do it. Remember the youth, oh God, young people, Lord, that have no more interest in church, Lord. Remind them of their first love. Help them to understand, mighty God. Lord, surround them, Lord, with your Holy Spirit, that, Lord, the Holy Spirit can speak and they understand to know that, Lord, going to church is better than going anywhere else, even to school, mighty God. Father, help them to know that their soul is important. They are important to you, oh God, and they need to search and to read your word and to find interest to come to church, oh God. Help, oh God, the young people that are backsliding, oh God. Father, they are just a human. They have so many peer pressure. But in the name of Jesus, you can solve every problem. You are the great problem solver. And we are depending on you this morning, oh God, to just encircle them with your Holy Spirit. Cover them under your blood and help them to come back, mighty God, before eternally too late. Mighty God, they don't know how many times they have out here. Father, reveal yourself to them, Jesus. Remember the appearance of God. Help them to live life, oh God, that pleases to you, that the youth, the young people can see a different. We are church, Lord. Help us, Lord, to live according to your will, oh God, that the youth around us in our community, all around the backslider, oh God, they can see you through us and come to glorify you. Mighty God, may ask you this morning, go before them, those who are going to school, those who are at home, wherever, those who are going to college, in the name of Jesus, I beg you this morning, oh God, in a special way, and I'm depending on you, Lord, you say, ask and shall give in. Your young people are dying without you, mighty God, and this morning, please, I'm begging you, we are all begging you this morning on this platform to reveal yourself to your young people, your children, oh God, help them, Lord, to surrender, help them to come back to the four mighty God. God before eternally too late, but the enemy is out there seeking who is of he can be born. And the young people, mighty God, is in his eyes, oh God, Father of mercy, have your way, Lord. We depend on you for victory. We can't do this ourselves, but with you, all things are possible. So, mighty God, search for your people, look for your young people, no oh Lord. Send your angel, no oh Jesus, to search for your young people and to convince them, Jesus that you are alive, you were young, and Father, you never sinned. Father, have mercy upon them one more time. Bless them continually, oh God, for if I fail to ask of you on behalf of our backsliding youth, dear Jesus, please, Lord, fail not to grant it unto us. In Jesus' blessed, wonderful name, I pray and say thanks. Amen and amen. Amen, amen, amen. At this time, Sister Kay Williams will come and pray for our children and adolescents. 
This morning, I'll be praying for that the older folks and young people will have better relationship. Pray for the spiritual strength and growth for the young people who are still in faith. Almighty God and our Heavenly Father, this morning I come to you, God, with thanksgiving my heart, O oh God, knowing that you are still on your throne interceding for us. This morning, O oh God, I place the young people in your care. I'm asking this morning, O oh God, to help them to have a better relationship with old people. Lord, the devil are using them in their own way. But Almighty God, with you in, in the vessel, we can smite the storm. I place them into your care this morning, O oh God. Have your own way with them, O oh Heavenly Father. Be with them in a special way, O oh God, because we know that the devil is after them. And, O oh Heavenly Father, we know that they're yours. And I place them into your care this morning, O oh God, to have your own way with them. Hide them behind you, O oh God, so that when others are, are ministering unto them, O oh Heavenly Father, they can accept you with a hoping heart and that your spirit may go through them and guide them in the right way. This morning again, oh God, I pray for the strength of the young ones who are in the faith of Heavenly Father. I pray, oh God, that you will continue to strengthen them, continue to be with them, continue to cover them under your blood, oh Heavenly Father, so that when the evil one comes near them, oh Heavenly Father, he can move away from them. Your Holy Spirit will be with them, oh Heavenly Father, strengthen them, guide them and protect them, oh Heavenly Father. Without you, oh God, they are nothing. And without you, oh God, we will surely fail. But this morning, oh God, I ask for your petition. I ask for your guidance, oh Heavenly Father. Be with us, Almighty God, in a special way. Be with this platform, oh Heavenly Father. We thank you for it. We can come together, oh God, to worship you in a spiritual way. Be with us continually pray today. And Heavenly Father, what a fail of heart in you at this time. Please, oh Heavenly Father, please pray not to grant it unto us as a humble ask these few words to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Sister Gordon will come and give us the prayer for strength and growth on the behalf of our young people to also be praying for our children who are in need. Let us pray. Let us pray. Loving Father and our God, this morning again, we are standing in the gap on behalf of our children and adolescents. Father, I want to pray, especially this morning, for spiritual growth in our young people. Uh, or children or adolescents. Help, Father, that they will find the joy oh. in reading your word and that as they read your word, they will practice what it is that they have read. Help them to recognize, Father, that is in building a relationship with you that they will be able to grow spiritually and therefore able to impact all those who are around them. We want to remember this morning those of our children who are in foster homes. Some because of lack of parental care, others because of things that may have happened to them or around them. We pray in a special way, Father, that where they are in these foster homes, that they will be given love and care. Whether it is an institutionalized home or it is with an individual pair, um, foster parents, we pray, Father, that they will be loved, they will be guided, they will be trained to do the things that are right. They'll be trained to love you, Father, so that their experience, Father, even though it may be one that they did not particularly want, will do them so much good that they'll be grateful for what it is that has happened to them. We pray, Father, that parents on a whole will recognize that it is their job to provide parental guidance for their children, that they can seek guidance, Father, from you, use your word, as a guide to help their children to be brought up in the right and proper way. And where they find themselves lacking, oh God, that they will seek the help that they need, 
so that their children will grow up to be fine, upstanding citizens who not just love you, but are also willing to work for you and to work for others. Remember also those children this morning, God, who are being disobedient to parents and guardians, who don't want to go to school, who don't want to go to church. Father, we recognize that sometimes things have happened that would have turned their mindset away from what it is that they should be doing that is right. Oh, Father, we ask that even now that healing will come to these children who need it, that they will begin to appreciate, Father, that in spite of what may have happened to them in the past, you are still a loving God. You are still caring and providing for them and that you are waiting with open arms for them to come to you. Have mercy on them, we pray, God, and we leave each and every one in your hand, knowing, Father, that you can do for them more than we can think or imagine, and that whatever you do, Father, will be well done. Thank you, God, for being not just our God, but the God who loves all our children and our adolescents. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. 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 At this time, I will be praying for our crusades, our ongoing crusades, and those that are in the planning. Let us pray. Eternal God and our everlasting Father, Lord, we look to you for your intervention. Lord, where your message is being spread, mighty God. We pray, mighty God, for your continuous blessings upon your people, Lord, as we go forward in doing your work. We pray, oh God, that you will provide, oh God, that you will bless, that you will sanctify, you will cleanse, Lord, that you will, oh God, deliver. You will make way, Lord, for souls to be born for your kingdom. This morning, Lord, we pray for the Bible workers. We pray for our preachers, our evangelists. We pray, oh God, for those who are working behind the scene. We pray for all the churches, mighty God, the communities, Lord, that you, oh God, that are putting on, that are having crusade at this time. We pray, Lord, that you will work a work in us, mighty God, that we will, oh God, go forth, mighty God, like wildfire. We will seek, oh God, those who are lost. We will spread the good news of salvation. We will, oh God, allow you to use us, mighty God, so that we will not, oh God, miss out anyone, and dear God, as for the young people, the youths, Lord, the children and adolescents in, oh God, the seeking of souls, Lord, may they not be left out, but mighty God as a church, Lord, as parents and guardian, may we do our part, oh God, in seeking out our children, in seeking out our adolescents, in bringing them, oh God, back to the fold. Those who have gone astray, mighty God, may we never leave them alone. May we, oh God, continue to go down on our, our knees on their behalf. May we, oh God, present them to you daily. Mighty God, do your will in us, Jesus, because only your will must be done. Continue to bless your people as we look to you and we seek your grace through Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. We want to thank you all, all of our intercessors who have availed yourselves this morning to pray on the behalf of our children and adolescents. It does not stop here. Let us continue to call upon the Lord on their behalf. Let us continue to lift them up before our Lord and Savior Jesus because our children are and, and adolescents are being attacked by the enemy and we are needed to rescue them. And so let us continue to pray for them. Amen. At this time, we will have our presentation. This morning presenter is none other than Brother Bazaro. He is an ardent deacon at the Freetown SDA Church. I can tell you that he is a willing servant of God because when he was called and at, at an appointed time to bring the word to us, he did not hesitate. He did not refuse, but he availed himself to be used by God. And so we want to give God thanks for our brother, Brother Bazaro, and we pray that the Lord will use him in a mighty way 
as he come to present the message to us this morning. Praise God. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, my sister, for such um, an introduction. And I say this morning, to God be the glory, great things he has done. Let us pray. Our loving Father, great God, almighty Jehovah is your name. I thank you for this occasion. Thanking you, O oh God, for what you have done for me. I pray that now you may wash me and cleanse me and take me to take over. Take over, O oh God, take full control of, of, of this morning's um, presentation. And let it be you and not me, I pray, for Christ's sake. Amen. You know, it was such a joy to see the little children, their faces a little as they sang. What a wonderful name it is. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. And this is what I'm here this morning to encourage you, my young friends, to do, to take Jesus as your friend. He's such a friend that you, you will find um, quite encouraging to keep. He's a friend you will, you can tell any and everything. Such a friend who will not tell anyone your secret. Such a friend you'll find in him a mentor. You'll find a father, a mother. You'll find a teacher. You know, take Christ as your friend. And by doing so, getting to know Christ, it will set that platform on which you will stand and will help you to go through life. This morning, I remember as a, as a teenager, around in my early teens, I read a story, um, a little book called The Young Warriors. And so it described um, five young men aged about 14 to 16 years old from the Maroon village of Mountain Top. The book is written by one V.S. Reed. And so it was now time for them to be inducted into the army of warriors of the mountain top maroons. Their names were Tommy, Johnny, Charlie, David, and Uriah. The two last names are consistent with the Holy Scriptures. Right, but before they could be inducted into the army of warriors, they had to go through five tests. One of these tests was to prove their integrity. And it was for them to run from the village of Mountain Top to an area known as Lookout Rock. Now, Lookout Rock, that area, that ground below it, was covered with stones of brightly red colors. And so they were to pick up one of these stones that were so unique and would run back to the village without stopping, taking rest or eating. Charlie, unfortunately, he cheated. And he was seen by Tommy and Johnny. And when he was told, and I must say that he, he won the race. But when he was told by the two young men that you know they had seen him cheating, he felt bad, so sad and depressed that he tried his best to make it up to them and to the warriors of Mountain Top. Now, what he did was kind of risky, but that's his way of going about it. He actually threw himself in the path of two red coats or the English soldiers who were trying to apprehend Tommy and Johnny as they walked through the wood. He was taken by the soldiers, Tommy and Johnny were set free. But these two young men could not allow for their friend to remain in the custody of the soldiers. I want you to understand that it would have been a team effort. So they could not say, well, Charlie messed up. 
So let them stay with the red code because they know that delivering Charlie from the red code would mean um, the, the, you know, the, the, the um, safety for the village and at Monte Top because he would take them, he would be put under duress to take them there. And I want you to understand my young people that you know, in, in working for Christ, as soldiers for Christ, you have to create a sense of, 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 of team effort that you need each other to hold together and to gain the victory for Christ. Now, while Charlie was in custody at the Red Bull, Tommy and Johnny um, sneaked into the camp. They were trying to deliver him. But Charlie said no, he had a better idea. And so he sent back words to Captain Dick, who was in charge of the soldiers. He said, tell Captain Dick that I will lead the Red Boat into Starapra Gully and so he can set your ambush there. This was a smart idea of a man who, who, who would have hurt his whole team and the, and the, and the village by his deeds, but he tried to make up. And so Charlie led the Red Coats into um, an ambuscade set up by the Maroon warriors. And the, thus the, 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 the village of Mountains Morning Top was spared. You know, in life, there are many youths who have messed up along the way. Some of these youths, you would see their faces, you know, in the AY program at church. You would see their faces smiling bright and nice, you know, as they would sing on the choir, the youth choir. And you would see them busy, you know, um, doing things for God. But sometimes they do fall by the way. But I want to say to you, my young friends, that let them, don't let them stay there. So the team effort will help you to reach down and to hold the hand of your fallen comrade and to lift them to their feet, you know, in the name of Jesus. Now, this morning, with all of those great um, stories, I realized that none fits better, none is more thrilling, and none is, is more um, rewarding in listening to our reading than the stories of the Bible. And when we look at the book of Daniel, chapter one, we saw how uh, Nebuchadnezzar went into the land of Judah and he, 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 he took with him men um, and persons from Judah to the land of Babylon. Among the company, a group of persons, verse 3, Hebrew, were four boys, young boys, Daniel, Azariah, Michelle, and Hananiah, these boys were trained and taught to be kings. They knew nothing about the harshness of life. They were not soldiers, but they were soldiers of the cross. And so when they were taken to Babylon, you know, they, they refused to eat the king's meat, the Bible said, and to drink his wine. Because having known God and having made God their friend, they could do nothing else than to please him. And they knew that if they had the food of the king that would have been offered to idols, it would be hurting their, sorry, their God. And they did not wish to do that. And so by that, it helped them to set that foundation that they were able to, as recorded in the third book of Daniel, when they were, were told by King Nebuchadnezzar to bow to his statue, the statue that he had made, they knew that the commandment of God said that they should not bow to any idols. They should worship him only. And they did that disregarding Nebuchadnezzar's threats. He even threw them into the fiery furnace but God was there with them. So I want you to understand this morning, my young friends, as I say that when you get intimate with Christ, 
when you come to know him and understand him and to find no other friend than him, he, then you will be able to understand and be able to go through all the rivers and crucible of life. Daniel, uh, the three Hebrew boys, did not wish to bow. And so Nebuchadnezzar, after throwing them in the fire, a great witness to the world came out because the boys were there alive and well. And not only they were walking in the fire, the Lord was there walking with them. And Nebuchadnezzar understand that the God of heaven is the true God and living God. Now in the book of, the, of, of First Samuel chapter 16, we see another great story when the Lord sent Samuel to anoint one of Jesse's sons. He didn't tell him who to anoint because God wanted to teach Samuel a lesson, a lesson of patience. He wanted Samuel to know that he, God, didn't look on the outward appearance, as he said in verse 7 of 1 Samuel chapter 16, but instead he looked at the heart. So God deal with the intent of the heart. Now, when all the young men were called before Samuel and he saw them passing before him, and he would say, oh yes, this is the one that the Lord had chosen because of how that man looked robust and tall and looked fit for a king. But the Holy Spirit said, no, Samuel, wait. And he soon realized that something was wrong when none of those men were chosen. And so he asked Jesse, he said, tell me something, Jesse. Are there any more sons you have left? And when I read, let me go to the, the scripture reading, uh, which is verse 11, was clearly read by that gentleman. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and the holy keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance and goodly uh, to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Now David was not thought of. He was sent to the hills of Bethlehem to my sheep. And maybe for him, it was not good because it was one of his older boys who should have been out there. But the Lord had a plan for David. And we'll see as Sister Ellen White responded to the reading. Um, she says, God choose and prepare David for his work. Six miles south of Jerusalem, the city of great king, was Bethlehem, where David was born. More than a thousand years before the infant Jesus was created in the manger and worshipped by the men from the east countries before the advent of the savior of the world, David, in the freshness of boyhood, had kept watch of his flocks as they grazed on the open fields of Bethlehem. The simple shepherd boy sang the songs of his own composing and the music of his heart made a sweet accompaniment to the mel melody of his fresh young voice. The Lord had chosen David and had ordained his life that he might have an opportunity to train his voice and cultivate his talent for music and poetry. The Lord was preparing him in his solitary life with his flocks for the work. He designed to commit to his trust in after years. So as I said before, young men, that when you get to know God, you see, while David was in the fields, it was designed by God for him to be out there. So he, he would sing these little songs, these songs that we now read as psalm. And he also had this little um, instrument of music. So he kept himself lively. It was maybe not easy for him to be out there. He was alone, but he did not feel lonely. And I want you to understand 
that David did not feel lonely because he got to know God while he was in the field. And so, you know, he developed this relationship with God that no one was able. So the Lord saw him and worked with him. So when the Lord sent Samuel to the house for him to be anointed, you know, it would, it would have been uh, for David not to, to be at the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the house at that time. But the Lord wanted to show Samuel and the others that he, God, worked with the heart of men and not the way they look. Not the education, not the, 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 um, the skill, not the learning that we have, that go home the way God chooses us, but he chooses us by the heart. So my young friends, I say to you again in closing, that make God, make Jesus your friend. Because by making Christ your friend, he will be able to guide and deliver you as you go. As David, um, when he was sent by his father to check on his brothers, in chapter 17 of First Samuel, he, he heard as he walked into the camp of the Israelite army, he heard a voice threatening and hurling curses at the armies of Israel. He said, no, no, not my God, something is wrong. When he saw the imposing figure of Goliath, David was very skinny, he did not back down. As a matter of fact, he raced towards him because he knew who he believed. He knew who he could depend on. He was not depending on man, nor on his own strength. David had none to fight for life. Saul would have been the right person to fight for life because of his stature. And, 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 and you know, um, him being a valiant man of Israel. But he could not. And David, aided by God, was able to put Goliath down, kill him, and deliver Israel. Now, there might be many Goliaths standing in your way, even now, I don't know what they are. It could be at school, it could be at home, it could be at church, but that friendship that you would have cultivated with Christ will help you to get these Goliaths out of the way. So I encourage you to stay strong in the Lord and abide in the power of his might, and you will always be victorious. Thank you very much. And the Lord continue to bless and keep you all as you go in his strength and favor. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. 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 We want to thank elder brother Ro for bringing us is the word of God this morning. We are grateful for the message and let us ensure that we take something along with us as we listen to the word of God. Let us ensure that we utilize this message this morning to help to seek out our youths and adolescents. Praise God. At this time, we will go into our request segment. We, it's now the time when we are able to type our request. And so each and every one of us can put in whatever it is that we are in need of. And the Lord is able to hear us. The Lord is hearing us. So make your requests at this time and we will pray on the behalf of all your requests. It's hard to see you. 
Amen. Amen. Stand still and let God move. This is what we are here to do this morning. And so we are praying for our youths, our children and adolescents this morning that God will move in their lives. God will move on their behalf. At this time, Sister Adrian will pray for the Zoom platform and communities. We all are praying for our children. Let us all put in a prayer, a word, on the behalf of a child that you know, a friend's child, neighbor's children, a relative, brethren, children. Let us put in a prayer on their behalf. Our sister Adrian will pray on the behalf of the Zoom platform and communities. And after this, I will be praying for the YouTube family. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come before you this morning another time on behalf of our Zoom and community families. Father God, we present each and every one this morning. You know our request, oh Father God. You have seen them, those that are written and those that are unwritten or unspoken. And so, Father God, we bring them before you this morning, God. Lord, you are God and God alone. Great are you, O oh God, and greatly to be praised. You are the great I am. You are the healing balm of Gilead. You are the great provider. And so as we present our children before you this morning, O oh God, Lord, we ask you now, O oh God, in their lives, we ask you, O oh God, to do for them that which one of us speak to their hearts, O oh God, to continue to serve you, almighty God. Lord, help them this morning, we pray, O oh Father God, intervene, step down in a mighty way in their lives, we pray, O oh great God of heaven. Lord, you see and you know because you are omnipotent and you are omnipresent. And so we're asking you, Father God, as our creator, you are the one who made them. So, Lord, we're asking you now, oh, Father God, to do for them, God. Help them this morning, do you. Be with them, Lord. Guide them, protect them, and cover them, Lord God, we pray. Lord, then help them to surrender and to yield. We leave them in your care, Father God, because it is you in whom we all live and move and have our being. So, Father God, as we come to you this morning, Lord, making our request be made known. We ask you now, O oh Father God, to incline thine ear unto us and grant us your peace, each and every one of us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen, amen. Sister, um, dear, can you see the requests that are on YouTube? Since we have prayed for our children already, we're going to leave those. We're going to pray for the other requests that are on YouTube. Did you get to see them, Sister Burgess? Yes, yes, Sister oh, Ruth. I'm seeing them. Thanks. Good. Let us pray. Holy Father and our God, Lord Jesus, we want to present before you all the requests on YouTube at this time. Lord, you see every individual. You see, oh God, their need, Lord, as they present them to you this morning. There are mothers and grandmothers who are crying out on the behalf of their children. There are those, oh God, who need their children and grandchildren to return to the faith. Mighty God, there are those who are in need of healing. There are those who are in need of financial help. 
And mighty God, the many other requests that you have already gone through, you know, even before they were typed. And so mighty God, we just ask of you, Jesus, to cover every request on YouTube that you will, oh God, answer, Lord, your people as they cry to you this morning on the behalf of their children. Mighty God, the needs are ever before you, Lord. You know how to supply. And so we just want to present to you, mighty God. And we ask of you, Jesus, that you will answer, Lord, according to your will, that you will take control of our young people. Those, oh God, who are confused, those who are lost, those, oh God, who are backslidden, those who are in need of healing, those who are in need of help, mighty God, and so much more that you already know. We place them before you, Jesus. We place our parents and grandparents, God, that you will help us, Jesus, that we will do our best, mighty God, to rescue our children, that we will, oh God, continue to pray for them, that we will not leave them, Lord, because they are God. When we leave them, Jesus, then, Lord, the enemy will snatch them away. Amen. And so, mighty God, continue to use us, Lord, as vessels. Continue to use us as a church so that we will avail ourselves, oh God, to reach out to the last of our children and we will bring them back before it is too late. Continue to be with us, Lord, as we look to you, Jesus, because you are our all in all, Lord, you are our everything. And outside of you, Lord, we have nothing. Continue to bless us and keep us, Lord, and help us. We pray and tell you thanks to Christ, our oh Lord. Amen. 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 We want to thank all of our intercessors this morning. We want to thank our host. We want to thank our prayer coordinator, Sister Ruth Walcott. We want to thank all our viewers and all those who have typed their requests. We want to thank you all for participating in this morning's program. We want to ask the Lord continuous blessings upon your lives, upon your families, upon your children and adolescents. We all have them in our midst and we want to continue to pray for them that the Lord will come through for them in whatever ways and needs that they have. And so this morning we are here and we just want to give ourselves to Jesus so that he will do to us according to his will. At this time, I will now turn over to Sister Ruth Walcott. As she That's for the birthday, is... Sister, Sister Burgess. Okay. Are, you, are, you uh, are there any birthdays, any anniversary celebration, any special celebration anyone is having today? On Zoom, Sister Burgess, there is Sister and Merton sending birthday greetings to her aunt Iris. On YouTube, we have Sister Millie Stevenson sending birthday greetings to her lovely sister Leonie Wilson. And we have Sister Mildred Johnson sending happy birthday greetings to Anna Lee Brown, the wife of Pastor Rayan Brown. Those Amen. are the two we are seeing so far, but let me use this opportunity as we remain right there, sister, there to say thanks to the penance, right? It's penance, right? Circuit. It is. The penance circuit, but especially Thousand. penance. Uh, right. I'm, I'm more familiar with um, penance. Yes, okay. I want to thank them all very, very much for coming on this morning and blessing our hearts. And if you hear, oh, they, they are praying, especially penance from the depths of their hearts for children is because there are many church mothers and fathers down there in penance. They do not only look out for their own children, but they take very, very good care of the children, especially whose parents do not belong to the church. Sometimes we go out and we baptize these children that have no parents who are Adventists. And sometimes we leave them up like that and we are the same ones, use our lips to curse them and to say, me when no say that it go up, they go take them, baptize them from non-Adventist homes. But God send them in our midst and he's watching to see how we are gonna treat them. But when it comes on to penance, I can tell you that they take good care of them down there. They go out and they make sure that they get their school 
books and bags and shoes and all of that to go back to school. I know Sister Coley, Sister Burgess, and all of those, they take very, very good care of the children down there. And I lift my heart to them this morning. So when you hear them praying and put them up put on, they are really, really serious about taking care of the children and adolescents that are in their midst. I am hoping that more of our churches who have not been doing so will emulate this little, it's a little church, you know, with some little people in there, not a lot of them, and they're not rich, but they are church mm -hmm. mothers and fathers there. Because when I went there one Sabbath, you know, a gentleman said, we take care of them, you know, we take care of them. Yes, they seriously take care. And I seriously, seriously love you guys for what you are doing for these little ones. All right, I'm not seeing any more birthdays at this time. All right, dear. I'm not seeing any more birthdays. Okay, so we want to celebrate with those who are celebrating birthday today. We wish you a happy, happy birthday. Wish you God's richest blessings as you continue on your journey. Let your journey be seasoned with the grace of God and he will direct your life. Happy birthday and have a blessed day to all of our celebrants today. And I Sister read. Winsome Daly is sending it out again and she put it in capital. Happy birthday to my dear sister, Leonie Daly Wilson. So I'm making sure that I read it again. It's in bold. All right, Sister Burgess. Yes, happy birthday. We all celebrate with you, Sister Leonie Wilson. We give God thanks for sparing your life and we ask that he will continue to keep you and bless you and cause his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. Happy, happy birthday. Okay, and also, um, sister, sister, dear, yesterday we went down to um, Clarendon Day where we are gonna have the work in on Sunday and we were able to purchase most of the materials that we need. And remember I said most, not all. So we are hoping to have a wonderful time down there as we try to take that sister out of the situation that she's in and put her and her children in a better condition. I wanna thank all those who have been contributing towards this, this effort. And I told her that anytime we hear that she put a man in the house, we come in and show she and the man because women must not be lost to man, man must be lost to woman. And she must not carry any money in there. So I made sure I warned her. You know, there are times when you try to help these people and they turn their backs on God and really even curse the church that the church didn't help them. But then we will know that, you know, they are telling lies. So with the, the materials, they are there on spot. You know, right now I'm very tired. I want to go back to sleep. And but come Sunday, so we ask that you continue to pray. Mm -hmm. Pray for us and remember we are seeking the hands of everyone in that community to come out and um, assist us. And on Sunday, I will only be lining up the platform and leaving and not be staying because we want to get on the spot by, by 7, 7.30. We want to be down there as we do what the Lord has asked us to do. Continue to pray that the hands will turn up. Continue to pray that funds will be made available because some persons, you know, we will definitely have to put something in their hand. Right, Sister Burgess? Yes, yes we definitely yes. will have to put something in the hands of even one or two persons who will be there constantly. And so far, you know, those funds are not available, but we know the Lord is gonna provide. So I wanna thank all those who have provided before, even before we knew this, this project would come up. You know, persons were providing and persons are still providing. And we just want to thank you, thank you, thank you for the love that you have in your hearts towards others. May God come to bless all of us as we do what he has called us to do. So have a great rest of the day. Remember, it's preparation bye, bye. day. Please say the word, Sister Burgess, remember. Remember, remember, remember to stay in the presence of God. Because when you stay in the presence of God, Satan loses his power. Have a blessed Amen. day, everybody.
Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.